But Michael Smirconish didn't end it here. On Saturday, he continued. Uh, because he had on another, uh, he, he had another segment, I should say, on this, and he had on a guest. Let me uh, cut to that clip now. Joining me now is Kerry Rodriguez, co-founder and president of the National Parents Union. Kerry, nice to see you here. So you're a former union organizer who then became a parenting activist. You have a presence in all 50 states. Re I should point out why he, he, if you notice, notice how he really, really focuses on how she apparently was a former union organizer. Uh, let me go back to you. Pay attention to how he really like italicizes it, emboldens it. Joining me now is Kerry Rodriguez, co-founder and president of the National Parents Union. Kerry, nice to see you here. So you're a former union organizer who then became a parenting activist. You have a presence in all 50 states. React to what I just said. The reason he does that is because the, because the National Parents Union is not a union at all. It's actually an organization that has received millions in funding from billionaires such as uh, the Waltons, uh, Bill Gates, uh, Charles Koch. And if, if you notice the similarity with all of those billionaires is that those are all uh, big fans of school privatization. And this group, the National Parents Union, is exactly that. It's a union-busting organization that advocates for school privatization. I mean, they wouldn't get funded by the Waltons, Bill Gates, and Charles Koch if they didn't do that. Well, I think you said it beautifully, Michael. And frankly, you know, unfortunately, what we're looking at right now is no end in sight because we have been in chaos for the past 20 months. And I was actually looking back on our notes last night. It was back in December of 2020 and where we were talking to the Biden transition team, asking, calling, crying for help saying we need contingency plans. Our, our kids are not all right. And 86% of American families have told us in our national polling that mental health concerns and the crises we see unfolding in our living rooms, that, that's number one to us. And I don't know how much longer this can continue. With regard to schools reopening, and obviously with Chicago top of mind, the red states, the blue states. I, I really want to focus on the fact that, again, we are talking about the request from these schools that wanted to go remote was literally, can we please go remote for one or two weeks? We're going to be coming back straight into, um, we'll be coming back straight from people, the teachers, the students, the various other faculty, people who keep the school running, janitors, school bus drivers. Um, we're going to be going straight from big family gatherings because of the holidays, vacations, traveling, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, there's going to be a huge spike that we we didn't know about. It was going to be how it was going to be beforehand. But once people started coming back and the holidays were ending and we had that week in between like holiday uh, uh, Christmas and New Year's and then the days right before New Year's, it was clear that there was a big spike after that. Um, they were simply saying, can we extend a remote working option for like one or two weeks. That was the request. It wasn't some never ending remote learning week. It was, can we just go remote just to get over this, the hump of this huge spike we're seeing. And then once cases go down, which we're now seeing now, uh, two weeks out that yes, here we go. That case, the, the, the spike is over and we're now seeing a slow fall back down. That's all they requested. That's all they requested, and that's what caused all of this hand-wringing and crying and whining and complaining and bashing of teachers. Also, you, we should also say and point out here that during these past, this past week and a half so far, there have been uh, many school absences from teachers who were sick, substitute teachers who were sick. So a lot of these schools were asking for remote learning or even temporary days off 
due to the fact that there wasn't enough teachers to run the daily uh, doings of a school. And then there were huge absentee rates among students too who were testing positive and who were sick themselves. I mean, it would have made complete sense to just extend that usual week and a half or so vacation by another week or so. Or go remote for that extra week or so. And then all the kids could have gone back, I don't know, this week or next week. They seem to have different responses, and I would argue neither of them is getting it just right. What do you see? Well, the, the problem is a lack of leadership coming from the federal government. Again, as you mentioned beautifully, $130 million, billion dollars, excuse me, has been sent down to the states to literally deal with this situation. COVID-19 mitigation strategies, making sure that we had testing, making sure that we had the technology needed so if the worst case scenario happened, we'd be ready and prepared. But one of the most important learned lessons that we have learned over the last 20 months is that we must keep our schools open. They are essential. Really? Uh, they are not nice to have. They are must haves. For who? I mean, no one's saying education isn't important and schooling isn't important. Why is in school necessary? For the kids? As you said before, we're going to lose an entire generation of kids if we do not hold this line. We lost generations of kids. And no one gave a shit. Like I said before, we've lost entire swaths of millennials and Gen Z before COVID. From things that none of you gave a shit about beforehand. It may be a gross simplification, but... From my standpoint, I look at red states that open uh, without regard for testing. I look at blue states that shut down without regard for mental health. And somewhere in between, as is usually the case, at least the way that I look at the world, is the truth. And the way that... What is he... Who is shut down? What is he talking about? Like, we're talking about a scenario that does not exist. Again, the teachers in Chicago... That was a walkout. That was a union walkout. What governments, state or federal, are mandating a shut? There is, there is not a single place in this country where a government has locked down anything. The last lockdowns in this country are going to be almost... Two years ago. What are they talking about? <laughs> they ought to be approaching it. Well, the problem is, Michael, like it, we're just being told to figure it out. And we're asking ec educators who are not epidemiologists to make these calls. They're not qualified to do so. This is what I love. This is what I love. They're not they're qualified to say we were told that we will get these things that obviously they previously were promised due to what epidemiologists said would, would help. Obviously, you need ventilation. We know the science behind how much ventilation plays into COVID. Numerous studies showing how like a gust of wind in a restaurant from a door opening spread COVID to people who were in the wind's trajectory and not to people who were sitting elsewhere in the restaurant. Numerous studies about ventilation and COVID. You're right. In red states, you have folks just saying, well, go back into the classroom. We'll figure this out if people get COVID. That's not safe. That's not going to keep classrooms open because you're going to see catastrophic numbers and you're going to have to shut classrooms down when half of the kids have COVID. It doesn't make sense not to have a test the Monday morning when you come back from a winter break to make sure you know who has COVID and who doesn't. I mean, that's just common sense. But then in the blue states, you've, so, got, the, you've got a similar yeah. problem where it doesn't make sense that we're going to shut down all schools for two or three weeks. Again, as if you had no idea that we were having winter break. Every kid in America should have been going home the, the Friday of winter break with a COVID rapid test. A I agree that we should have given tests. Sure. 
But what are you talking about where no one is calling for this? No one is calling in any blue state for a two to three week shutdown. It was not called for anywhere. Again, what you saw in Chicago was a labor issue. Union decided to walk out because they were not given what they were promised to uh, fight and mitigate COVID, the spread of COVID in their schools. There was no statewide shutdown. There were specific school districts that closed due to these these dis- labor disputes, or they literally closed because there weren't enough teachers to work. That's all it was. What are they talking about? It's an imaginative. It's a. It's a figment of their imagination. It's Epcot mindset here. Love them. So that we knew when we were going back to school on Monday morning, you, you take your test, you're negative, you're good to go on the school bus. That's just common sense. It's as if we had no idea that winter break was going to happen and that we were going to have a COVID surge. You know, I'm not an epidemiologist. I'm a mom of five little boys. And I had a pretty good idea that we were going to have a COVID surge, whether or not we got a variant or not, because we've learned some lessons about how this pandemic works. The surge was much higher than anyone anticipated. In fact, it was the highest of the entire pandemic. Mine are older than yours. We have four, three of them are boys. Our daughter is launched, married, and a mom of her own. But from my perspective, what concerns me are not only those still in school, but those who are on the verge of or should have launched by now. And they too are getting screwed in this process because in the last two years, they haven't been given the benefit of those things that I articulated at the outset. You get the final word, go ahead. Again, caring about, oh my God. There's never have I seen any of these people ever care about what people are graduating into before. It is stunning. Stunning. Well, I got to tell you, Michael, last night I was talking to a family in North Philadelphia. And we've got a father with a master's degree. You've got a mom who is educated, has COVID, cannot work right now. He's trying to drive Uber. They have kindergarten kids. They've got college kids, whole giant family. And, and the dad just said, something's got to give. I don't have enough left in me to search for logins to try to get these kindergartners on Wi-Fi. I, I have a, a daughter who's who's really struggling because she's socially isolated. Like, when is this got to, when is this going to give? We're tr- We're expected to hold up the American economy, still show up to work, still make sure we show up to run our hospitals. At the same time, we've got decisions being made in the American education system in a vacuum. I like how she brought up hospitals because you could hear the same shit from nurses and doctors saying they are fed up. You got nurses and doctors in this country flat out quitting, changing career paths because they are fed up with the bullshit. Are you kidding me? Bringing up hospitals? Isn't isn't there going to be a isn't there plans for, uh, yeah, nurses have been calling for national walkouts. And there have been strikes. Are you what a great example. And and I like as you said, we're expected to go back to work and run the economy. You're literally, literally remote zooming into this interview with Smirkanish lady. Literally. Are you kidding me? Why aren't you in the CNN uh, building? Why didn't you go to the the uh, the uh, the TV studio? Why, why, why are you at home? Via Skype. Saying, well, just take two days off. 
That's not how the American society works. That's not how our families work. And we need to be seen because our families are in crisis right now. Our children are in crisis. And unfortunately, it doesn't seem to me like we're using even the resources we have, $130 billion in funding, wisely to make sure that we're navigating the situation so that we're going to be okay at the end of this pandemic. We've got to start listening. Kerry, Ro Kerry Rodriguez, thank you so much. Who, who is she speaking to right now? She's yelling at the teachers. She's literally reprimanding teachers. And then she's saying, talking about the, uh, the billions of dollars that were given to schools. Who are you talking to? Teachers don't have that. You think there's te the teachers are walking around with billions of dollars in their pockets? It's just unbelievable. And by the way, uh, you might wonder uh, about uh, the interview Michael Smirkanish did with a teacher right after as a response. Uh, let me get to that right now. Oh, no, wait, I'm sorry. It doesn't exist. It doesn't exist. At least CNN didn't put it up online. I couldn't find it. 